Hello, welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. Today we're looking at black and white photographs. So we're going to see how to make your digital images black and white. We're going to be looking at a few techniques and um, hopefully one, you'll find one that suits you. First though, um, looking at more traditional methods, you can use this stuff. Um, this is this is 35mm film. <laughs> Some of you might not have seen before, but this is a black and white negative film. Uh, you can get this up on the internet quite cheaply, and this is also black and white medium format, medium format film. I'll just trash my desk. Yeah, black and white medium format film, black and white 35 millimeter film. If you want a more traditional method, and they just go in film cameras. However, if you're a bit more modern and a bit more technical, you might have some digital photographs, and you might want to put those into black and white as well. But why should you use black and white photographs? Well, personally, I think black and white photographs are more gritty. They tend to be more emotion, emotional, and I think in a, in like a gallery or a kind of portfolio type type thing, black and white photographs tend to stand out more, and they they have, I think they have more of a story to tell, and they look nicer. Uh, we can see um, on my personal portfolio on Flickr here, uh, there's a lot of black and white photographs. I did go. Um, through at one point at not doing any colour work at all for about a year. So uh, we've got portraits here. People tend to look better if they're lit and photographed properly. You know, you've got a good like, contrast on the faces. People tend to look better in black and white. And behind the scenes of, for filmmaking also works well as like a documentation. That works well in black and white as well. So there's my personal preference in black and white. And me just showing off some work. So, true to the rest of them, let's have a look at the photo that we're going to be working on today. It's a photograph of me. Uh, this is a self-portrait that I took through a window, which is where we've got a nice contrast of light across the face. And we're going to be turning it into this lovely black and white image. And we're going to be looking at four different ways of doing it. Each of them gets a little bit less basic and a little bit more favoured by me. So let's pop this into Photoshop. Speedy Gonzales today. So we have our photograph in Photoshop. So let's use the first technique. This is a very basic technique. It is um, there is a even a keyboard shortcut for it is that basic, but you can go to image adjustments and desaturate, or as it says there, shift command U, shift control U if you're on a, a computer. So let's go ahead and let's just first just duplicate this layer just so we can see what it looks like. Um, saturated and just go command shift U. There it is. Basically it just sucks all the colour out of it and it that's all it does. So it just completely removes all colour so we're left with the same kind of tones and shadows. There's no added contrast or effect or anything. It literally just takes out the colour. And if you're looking for a very quick fix, a very quick and easy way of doing a black and white photograph, then that's perfectly fine. I however am not 100 percent satisfied with this because it looks very flat, there's not a lot of contrast, you know, the contrast tonight that we had that looked really, really nice beforehand has uh, almost disappeared. This can be fixed by messing with brightness and contrast, levels or curves, but it just seems more work to do when we can do all this in one step anyway. The next three I'm going to look at uh, can be done again through image adjustments, and they're all in here. I'm not going to tell you what they are yet, because I'm going to do them as layer adjustments. Now, the reason I'm going to do a layer adjustment is because that way it doesn't apply it directly to the photo. It becomes a layer on top of the photo and gives the effect. I've explained in previous tutorials why I prefer this. It's because if I were to put on, um, say, let's say a hue saturation, which is what we're about to do, if I do it through this, it will apply it to the background layer here. And if I want to then go back and tweak it, I can't because it's already been put on. But if I do it as an adjustment layer, I can go back and edit and fine tune it later and get the overall photograph looking good. So let's go ahead and put a hue saturation adjustment layer on by clicking that. There's our hue saturation layer. And all we're going to do is crank down the saturation to minus 100. It looks, it looks exactly the same as the desaturation layer we just did, because it is exactly the same. Here though we have a, um, a lightness slider where we can adjust the lightness of the photograph 
And um, again, it's personal preference. I really like dark and very high contrasty and very dark black and white. So I'm going to drag it down to there. But again, contrast is still it still looks a bit flat. You know, it's a bit dark, which is fine. Uh, we can see the histogram up here um, can do with bringing in a bit. And again, you you need to do uh, contrast layers curves again to bring up the contrast. And again, it's just more work, more effort when there are other means available that will do it a lot quickly and better for you. So that's hue saturation. Uh, we believe if we click on it, we can also colorize it. Yay! So we can add a blue or maybe go for like a sepia tone. But why bother? So that's hue saturation. Let's turn that off. Next up is a very self-explanatory and very obvious tool called black and white. Um, click on that and it creates a black and white photograph. Now that's instantly, I think, a little bit better than what we're given on the saturation front. Let's just have a look at black and white and then desaturation, you know. It's already a lot more punchy and a lot more um, gritty. Well, they're exactly the same. No, it is a bit darker. Good. I thought I was going crazy. So black and white, this gives us control of the colours that will be in the photograph already. So we'll see reds, yellows, that'll be skin tone. Greens, um, there's a bit of green up here, but there'll be some shadows. Cyan's and blues are shadows. And magenta again, bits of skin and bits of shadows. So black and white, so if we adjust the red, we'll notice um, a lot of the red pigments in my face will start to go darker, as well as the lips, because my lips are red. So this gives us full control um, over the different colours in the photograph. So we can see the, the, the cyan's there in my waistcoat in the shadow going down. Blues will make it even darker still. Uh, obviously my face looks a bit ridiculous because red is too dark. Let's bring that up a little bit. If you're looking for something that doesn't look too ridiculous but still it gives us more control and you can kind of create the effect that you want so that's obviously you know a lot more deeper and darker and that's kind of the more more towards the image that I'd be looking for in a black and white photograph so that's black and white a lot more control a lot more freedom you're more likely to get a result you like last and by no means least, this is my favourite method, and it's one that is used not really for, for black and white, but it's the it's the channel mixer. And this basically lets us control the red, green and blue channels in a photograph. So we can, because um, a photo is made up of the, these three channels, so you can see them in our channels palette down here. And this tool I use not just for black and white, but I also use, use it for correcting white balance. <coughs> if for some reason I haven't taken a raw photograph um, to edit on the computer and then convert to JPEG and I've only shot a JPEG photograph then I'll use color balance in Photoshop to correct my white balance however it can be used to create black and white photographs as well we just click the monochrome button up here and that gives us a black and white photograph very similar to the um, desaturated image we did first However, when we come over to the sliders, we can start um, editing the red, green, and blue channels and to create different kind of effects. When you're using the channel mixer, you do want to make sure that this total here um, is that it stays as close to or on a hundred percent, just to keep the just to keep the tone the same, so you don't lose anything. So let's go ahead and play around to get a good. I'm going to lighten the blues slightly, lighten the greens up. So you can see, you can kind of just play around in, until you get a, a kind of contrast and and feel that you're happy with. It doesn't have to be bang on 100. I'm going to, go, I'm going to satisfy it 82. So yeah, that's more towards a black and white photo I'd go for, you know. It's more contrasty, it's, it's still kept um, the detail in, but it's not completely flat. So, those are the four methods we're using. If you do want to just go ahead and do a quick fix with the desaturation level, um, as I said, there are ways to correct the contrast. You can go use a brightness and contrast adjustment layer and play with it there. Um, 
you've got levels which you can just um, select this middle one and it will change the thingy, the contrast. Or use curves and create an S-shaped curve like so. Obviously it's not affecting the photograph because it's underneath the layer, that's just how you would do it. So those are the ways to create a black and white photograph. Um, choose whatever you feel most comfortable with and what you think will give you the best look. Um, I normally use the channel mixer and then if that doesn't give me the result I'm after, I'll use the black and white tool as well. One final thing, you may notice the background has changed a little bit from this image. You've got this white and green here and now it's gone. How I did that, just in case anybody was interested, um, I took my colour picker, changed it to black, selected the brush tool up here, and then just painted onto the um, onto the photo. So then you just paint black over it, and then boom, it's gone. Really, is that simple? <coughs> That's a good way of fixing some backgrounds as well. If you want a completely back, back, if you want a completely black background, but didn't realise there was stuff in the background like I did. So that's black and white photography. Um, if you want more information, check out the internet. I'm going to be writing up some blogs on Word on Tumblr, along with the videos. This is also a very, very, very good book, black and white photography in the digital age. Um, very useful. They've got um, some good tutorials on how to do stuff. Um, and they also use Photoshop in here. It is an old version, as you can see there. And it is a Windows version as well. But um, you can apply it to the modern day. And it's, they've got some helpful hints and tips in there as well. So check out that book. Um, please subscribe to the channel. Follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook, whatever. Any kind of social media platform we're likely to be using. So thank you for watching this video. And hopefully you'll enjoy black and white photography as much as I do.